All right, and we are back for game two. As a recap, game one went definitively in Jadax's favor. His micro was a little better than Jace's, even though Jace was faster off the gun with the Roach Rush. Um, and then when Jace tried to recover and expand, maybe for thinking long game, Jadax had the right instincts and went ahead and pushed his advantage, and it was GG. Relatively short game. Um, here we're on a four-player map, so theoretically it could be a little bit of a longer game, depending on what the players elect to go with. And here we go. So, up here in the top right, the, what is that, northeast, as it were, we have in the blue, Blue Zerg, Jadax. Everyone give it up. Down here in the southeast, we have, in the green, Jace. Now, he's Protoss, as you will instantly notice, and it's a change from game one. Um, he's been known to try out different strategies just for the hell of it. Um, he's not quite as you know, rigorous in terms of his builds as, as Jadax is. He's maybe thinking to throw him off kilter by being tossed, you know, and, and, and showing that Josh has to prepare, or Jadax has to prepare for other things. Could be what he's thinking. Or maybe he has some kind of trick up his sleeve. He has been known to do a mad Dark Templar rush. Although, if Jadax isn't expecting that, I don't know what he's expecting. So, the past history between these players, I think, probably bears heavily on this matchup, but it's still a long-awaited matchup nonetheless. Alright, so standard opening from both of them. It looks like Jadax is sending out that Overlord to scout, so maybe he's thinking rush if he can just, you know, find the base that Jace is at. All he has to do is, you know, just hit him right with those early roaches. Toss doesn't really have anything to deal with it unless he knows they're coming. And Jace goes with early gateway rather than... Oh, no, he's found him. Jadax has definitely found him with that drone, so... He's going early gateway, not early forge, so does Jace have it in him to stop the early Zerg rush? I don't know. I mean, you see here, the pool's gone down, the extractor's gone down. It looks just like last game's Roach rush. I would be I'm interested to see what he's ended up going to be thinking in terms of this rush, because if he goes Roach rush again, he has to think that Jace is going to expect that, so... I don't know. We got a, we got a probe just sitting here contemplating his navel. Oh, there, okay, there he goes, okay. Building that forge. Yep, you had to think that was coming to get those cannons up. Um, man, they, they really like to have tussles with these these workers here. Anyway, doesn't matter. Alright, so we've got the pool down. No Warren, though, from, from Jadax yet. Looks like he's just going with more uh, drones. Let's take a look at production. That's always a fun thing to look at. Yep, yeah, got that queen coming out and taking out a, getting a zealot early. Um, I guess that's, that's a good move, you know, to defend against any early rush that could be coming, you know, zerglings or, or whatever, I mean, which, I mean, you could, could expect, just changing it up a little bit from the last game's rush. Okay, got the Evo Chamber going down. Now we're thinking that, that just like I thought, Jadax is probably trying to change it up, doesn't want to go just back to the roaches, because he thinks Jace is probably preparing for that. But here's what I love the mind game of this, because in the end, maybe Jace thinks that he wouldn't go roaches, so he doesn't prepare for it, so if he had actually stayed with the roaches, it would have worked. So, you know, who knows? It's, it's just the, the advantage of being the omniscient referee. In any case, keeping on chrono boosting that that Max is trying to get everything, you know, stacked up in terms of his economy. Got the second gas going down, so he has to be maybe thinking long term. Takes care of that scouting Zergling. Did he see the second gas? Does he know that the tacking up is coming? We don't know because I didn't put it to his viewpoint, because I'm really smart. Anyway, got that scouting tr or probe trying to see what it is. He must notice immediately the lack of the Roach Warren, which means that he has to be thinking of something else up his sleeve. It hasn't gone for Lair Tech yet, so Jace, I would imagine, is a little confused at this point. Just kind of wondering what's going on. I mean, he's got that decent wall off, but he doesn't even have any idea what Jadax is going for. Jadax hasn't really showed his hand. That second gas makes me think that he's going for some kind of tech dose strategy as well, but of course, Jace didn't notice that. I don't know if Jadax noticed Jace's second gas either, so, you know, we don't really know. Got the Robo going down there for Jace. Is he thinking detection? Is that what he needs? Does he Is he going for mortals or colossi? We don't really know. It's, you know, it's really funny that Jadax has the Zelnaga Tower, as it were, because that's a very popular move for Jace in previous games, so maybe, maybe this is kind of Jadax's version of thumbing his nose at Jace. Who knows? Okay, a lot of production coming out now. Looks like just drones, just droning up the economy. I could have noticed that in the top left, too. And going with speed on the links. Maybe he's thinking upgraded links. He's got this Evo Chamber, not doing anything, but he's got it. Going Lair Tech, which could be used for the upgrades or could be used for something else. 
<laughs> wow, damn, I have to wonder what that's about. What is he upset about? Chrono boosting out warp gate. And going with three of four, two observers. Okay, two observers. So he was going with the... Uh, does he expect some kind of burrowed unit? I, I don't know. Tough to tell. I have to say, though, expanding at seven minutes and two seconds seems kind of late for Jadax. I mean, I, going straight to Lair Tech, but then not doing anything with it. I mean, you would have expected it would, you know, popped out some kind of, you know, infestors or some kind of Lair Tech unit, but instead he just waits for that real late expand after the Lair, which hasn't frankly benefited him at all yet. So, not sure what's going on there. And, of course, Jace with the late expand, but that's probably just because he... Being cautious about the rush. Oh, honestly, he doesn't really have that many units or anything to defend against that either, so. We'll see what they're planning. Uh, Jadax has got lots of scouting going on, trying to probably investigate, see if we can hit him from this side. Maybe see if he has the natural expand there. Jace, of course, you know, I guess being unorthodox with his expansion is trying to protect from the rush. You know, if he goes with the natural, he probably thinks it'll get sniped, which is a decent thing to think. Now Josh moving out with those links. With the speed, you know, so he's got a, a nice harassing force. But the question is, will he find the expansion? And if he does, see, I don't think Jay sees this coming at all. Your warriors have engaged the enemy. Oh wow! So Jadax knew the observer was coming, takes that out right away. No, Jace has no idea about the incoming Zergling harass on that open and very vulnerable expansion, which isn't actually. Oh, it is building drones or probes or whatever the heck they're called. In any case. We're not really sure. Oh, did he catch that? Did he catch that Zergling there? I don't know if he did. Oh, he has to see it now. He has to know that it's coming. If they checked that natural, which he did, which you know, so it gives him that extra second for not building the natural. But does he see it coming to this other one? Interestingly enough, Jadax doesn't even go to the other one. So does he assume that he didn't expand just because he didn't put on the natural? Now that's interesting. In the meantime, he's got his expand going. J Jace has his expand going, so maybe this is going to end up being late game. The Hydra Den is up, so maybe he's thinking, you know, some kind of mass Hydra machine gunner type thing. I don't know. Two Robos from Jace. Does this does this mean Colossi? Is that what we're thinking here? Just kind of back her up some kind of big old ground army or something? I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, this is a must-win situation for... <laughs> look at that. Just parked over those links. I wonder if Jadax notices that. This is a must-win situation for Jace, though. So, I mean, he has to be thinking some kind of safe strategy. If he goes too risky, it's just, you know, surrendering the whole match, so. Wow. Well, there's the, there's the safeness right there, you know. He doesn't want to risk the, the workers getting sniped on his one base here. Going down with the Robo Bay. Okay, yeah, so he's got to be thinking Colossi at this point. Does Jax see that? Does Jax know that? It doesn't look like it. The wall-off has been very effective. If he stays with that all-ling strategy, or even the Hydras, he's going to be in some serious trouble. If <laughs> So, evolving that extra range on the Hydras, evolving the the range upgrade attack and more lings and more hydras yeah i mean he's he's going all in with light units so if if jace is an, able to defend himself long enough to get some colossi out there maybe oh no oh no oh jace is in trouble now oh that's a problem big problem he's gonna snipe that nexus before jace can scramble anything Oh man, and he's drawn those stalkers out. Shoot! Well, that whole plan for Colossi on one base is going to be a pretty tall order now. I mean, if he can get them out, if he can press the advantage with them, take those light units out, that's definitely a possibility. But with with that lack of income, I I have to say it's going to be it's going to be definitely a, a tougher task. So now he's got those stalkers sitting out there. Watching for any other people playing in the lawn, so to speak. And here comes the first Colossi. Alright, alright, but as you notice, he's only training one Colossi. Doesn't have the gas for the second one yet. Probably in part because of that sniper expansion. I got a lonely assimilator down there. Taking out his eyes, yep. Alright, alright. Sees a lot of lings, though, so he's got to be committed to that Colossi strategy. Oh, he's supply blocked. Oh, for shame. Now the Colossi starts going with the second one. I mean, if he holds out for long enough, it's going to be tense. Cause, oh, oh. That could be his doom right there. You see, we're seeing mutas from Jadax. If Jadax commits to those mutas... Which... Five more. Five. Oh, shoot. Is he one step ahead of Jace? Is that what's going on? Oh, here they come right now. 
And he's throwing down that third base. Tunnelings. Bunch of mutas. This could be it for Jace. Poor guy. No expansion. Really hurting on gas. Gotten the if he sees the Colossi too, Judax will instantly commit to air. So it's if he's gonna win with those Colossi, he's gotta Oh, going for the natural now so he can defend it, maybe. But if he's gonna win with those Colossi, he has to go right out with them. And just Oh Will those cannons help? Does he see the Colossi? He has to at this point. Of course he does. Oh shoot. So now Jace's hand is revealed. And doesn't even have blink on the stalker, so can't defend the exp Oh, he does! He does. I'm just an idiot. Oh, but now he draws him out to get just murdered by these lings. <laughs> it's a pro Oh, but can't- come on. Defend him. Yeah, retreat him. Come on. Get him with the- yeah, okay. I sound like I'm cheering for somebody, but I just wanted to at least see this Colossi come to play. I don't think Look at that, he's defended to expand. Very interesting. The thing is, like I said, now that Jace has shown his hand, it's probably GG just because of Jadax's clear economic advantage, as you can see up there. We could go to the income. Yep. I mean, Jadax has a clear economic advantage. With the Zerg, he could just pop out a ton of units. And if he knows what the composition of Jace's army is, it could theoretically just be over right here right now. Well... My guess is that Jace saw that, he knows what's at stake, he realizes that he can't sit around and just build Colossi because Jadax can easily counter that. So here comes the push. Oh, is he going to have... he's not going to go all the way. And here are the Corruptors now, exactly what I thought. Jadax knows how to counter Colossi, That's, that is not a tough task. The question is, does Jace... okay, so he's going to try to place that pylon up there to be able to reinforce his units. Got more. Oh, got observers coming out. Okay, no, no Colossi. He's at least wised up to that whole situation. Luckily, protected his his home base here with those cannons. That was a big deal for sure. Defending against the Oh, look at me missing the engagement. Obviously, snipe those Colossi with the Corruptors. But won the engagement overall, though. He has to be thinking victory, but he has to realize the economic advantage that Jadax has. He's going to have... Yeah, he's going to have these lings here. It's, it's not... Oh, and he let him get surrounded, too. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking here. Alright. Well... He's going to try to stick them back there, maybe regen their shields a tad, if at all possible. But at this point... Oh, is that what he's thinking? Clever, I suppose. I mean... There goes the observer, though. What's he doing back at home, though, is the question. Not much of anything. Accruing resources from one base, because there goes his expansion. <laughs> Poor Jace has been starved this whole game long, and there go his two ill-fated harassing stalkers. Oh, man. Got that second hatch going up at the third base. I mean, he's got to be thinking just macro up a huge army and stomp him out. I mean, it's GG right here. I have to wonder whether Protoss was a good choice for Jace. You know, he's not quite as quick on it, not quite as adaptable. Maybe thought the power units could help, but... I mean, the army just never really macroed up. Wait, oh, look at that. The late, the late Dark Shine has to thinking for like the trump card in the end but I don't think it'll happen I mean he's got these these spore crawlers here he's got overseer right here I mean maybe he's trying to do with some kind of cloaked base defense or something like that maybe he doesn't bring the overseer with the army I can see that maybe that gives him an advantage if he takes out a lot of units but honestly he doesn't have anything to reinforce I mean no resources coming in his income has got to be hurting right now oh shoot shoot He's even lost more units in terms of resources than Jadax has. This is definitely painful. And here comes Jadax trying to take out the stalkers now. I mean, good micro with the stalkers. You have to give him credit for you know, working with what he's got, but this amount of units? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you can really do. Here come the Hydras now. It's only so long that that wall can hold. Trying to chrono boost out some more units. 
Always a fighter to the last, and there goes that cannon. Oh! It's the cloaked base defense I talked about. And <laughs> Jidax immediately sees that and <laughs> cuts the heck out. Saves the units. I mean, it, it averts the total destruction of Jace's base for now, but how hard is it to just stick an overseer in the army, you know? I bet one's coming up right now. There it is. There it is. And, I mean, you have to think it's GG when he brings in, I mean, the clear economic advantage, a lot more units. Jace really doesn't have anything to show. Those Dark Templar couldn't have been cheap. Really no gas left. Maybe he can hope to pop out a bunch of more zealots, but at most, what is it, three? Four? Had to cancel those. Here comes the Overseer now. And there they go. Wow. I mean, a bold move by Jace to go ahead and play Toss, but uh, dang. Jidax just merciless with his air. Expanding, gaining the economic advantage, pressing units, keeping him suppressed. I mean, he pretty much did everything right in this game. As much as it made him to say it. I'm kidding, you didn't hear that. There it is. Game over. Game over. Wow. Not a lot of chatting there. They must have been really into that game. But as you can see, the overview clearly favors Jadax. Let's see. Phew! <laughs> Let's see what the chatter's about. Let's see if I can record now. My heart is pounding. <laughs> I like this. They're really getting into it. And they are very, very entertaining matches. I could not say more. I, they're going to love watching these on the replay, despite my poor casting skills. i got to say, my micro sucks. <laughs> Oh, there we go. I was about to say, I, I think your micro was okay there, buddy. The macro, yeah, I mean, the expanding could have been done faster, but, I mean, it's just kind of like with a bear, you got to be, you know, faster than the guy behind you. That's all that has to happen with him. All you have to do is macro better than Chase. Yeah, there you go. Stop me from expanding. Precisely. Precisely what happened. That was the plan. <laughs> so mine did, too. Pretty much. Pretty much went exactly as they're describing. Well, let me go over and hop on there and chat them up and see what they want to do next, but... I mean, technically, there, Jadax takes the series. Powerful Zerg player. Really, uh, shut your base off. And I was like, fine, shut me out. Well, then you're staying in. <laughs> Very clever. Very clever and well played. All right, we'll end this cast here. Sorry for the bad casting skills. No soup for you. <laughs> Hope you tune in next time. This has been a riot. Um, hopefully, we'll get some more competitive StarCraft 2 up on our channel. Love these players. All right, peace out.